What's up, everybody? We got the best episode so far of True Detective Night Country to talk about, and I can't wait to get into it. There will, of course, be spoilers for the episode in my review, so make sure you've seen episode four before watching this video. And with that out of the way, let's get into the episode. I'm actually going to switch it up this week and start with my theories instead of ending with them because I got some bragging to do this week. I've been shouting from the mountains the last two weeks that this chick, the the older prior is talking with isn't real and won't show and that's confirmed in this episode she isn't on the plane he's waiting for now i still did predict she's involved in the murders and that's yet to be confirmed but i got a damn good feeling about it then i believe i also mentioned last week that i was getting suspicious of the older prior for flat out being involved himself and you know if i didn't i am right now and i now think based off episode 4 and the preview of episode 5, that Ted, the one Danvers is sleeping with, is also involved in some way. It's something about how, you know, obviously this season is very fresh and we really didn't see anything like it in the first three seasons yet. It still feels eerily similar to season one, especially with the obvious ref uh, references to the season. But so I'm putting Ted and the older prior, not the younger one, on my dartboard officially, they've got to be involved. Then as I said at the beginning, this was far and away the best episode of the season in my opinion. In fact, I think it might be the best episode of the show since the season 2 finale. So with that, I've got only one complaint for this episode. That being Danvers' daughter, uh, adopted daughter's storyline. Like, I get it, it's probably going to be connected to the overarching story with the heritage and everything. But Jesus, man, it's the same shit every week she does some stupid shit gets in trouble mom bails her out mom yells at her they stop talking to each other until the next episode i've had enough i've seen enough the daughter has now replaced navarro as the annoying side story that's eating up time from the story i care about but that's it that's all i got for the con so let's get right into what i liked about this episode first thing being the opening scene this is something i constantly talk about when it comes to true detective and this week's episode delivered just locking me in right away for phenomenal 60 minutes. On the flip side, the storyline of Danvers and the young prior has been great. They really nailed the work interfering with family with this duo, much like we had in season one and season two mostly. It was there a little bit in season three, but not as much. And just, I'm really liking it here this season. Then maybe my favorite part of the season so far, the supernatural elements and also the darker borderline horror vibe of the show. Listen, I'm a baby back bitch when it comes to scary stuff, so when I'm liking something that's leaning horror, it's the good stuff, and this is definitely the good stuff. Kalia Reyes genuinely had her best scene acting-wise at the end of this episode where she gets put into, I don't, I don't know what they want to call it, I'm going to call it terror mode, and it's just brilliantly acted, and I absolutely love the fresh take from creator Issa Lopez, and since I mentioned it, that last, like, 15 to 20 minutes was absolutely incredible. Both the interactions between Danvers and Navarro, and when they get separated, just amazing. And so that'll do it for my review of the fourth episode from True Detective Night Country. A great episode to lead into the last two episodes of the season, which next week uh, drops early on Friday for streaming. If you weren't paying attention to the end, I'm not sure with cable how it's going to work, but it'll be out Friday night on Max, which is just awesome. But let me know what you thought about this episode down in the comments below and make sure you have a great day.